that's that's pretty tight. I think that fit. I mean, if we pushed hard. I have enough. um, I have paper clips in the office. No, I think close. The pin. ones that hurt your finger every time. You know the clippers. I'm gonna get a close pin, like a, you know, like a wooden I've close pin. Those. Are you putting your nipples? <laughs> yeah, that's the ones. <laughs> do you like those or do you prefer the, uh, um, clamps? No, the extension cords. What are they called? Jumper cables. Jumper cables. <laughs> <laughs> I like jumper cables because they got the little teeth. It's all about tolerance. You <laughs> first. You gotta build Pain up to tolerance. That. You yeah. first. Yeah. Jerry's just silent <laughs> over here. He's like. He's like, you guys are amateurs. <laughs> amateurs. This is all the intro. <laughs> he's like, he's like, we got a jump box back at the house. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he's like defibrillator. Clear. Defibrillator. Clear. Exactly. <laughs> boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do this? Yes. Jerry says yes. All right. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to the Outer Belt Podcast. I am Patrick. And you all know my friends. Chili. Buttermilk. Slim Jim. Snap it to a Slim Jim. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, we got our producer, Mr. Jerome Barrow. That's, Jerry. that's the one in the house. Oh, man. Well, as y'all can tell, it has been a night, it has been a day, it has been something, and we made it, we're back, we're sorry we missed you last week, some scheduling conflicts, and we just couldn't make it happen, we tried, it just didn't work out, but we're back, and we are excited to be here, therapy is necessary, it's been a heck of a two weeks, and uh, I'm just thrilled to be here with you people. I'm excited. I'm excited, if you couldn't tell from the intro. You (laughs) seemed a little like... uh, Let's do it. Let's do go. it. Yeah. That or you were like really, really digging at Slim Jim. <laughs> <laughs> do you know I've never one? I've never ate one. What? 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 It's always been the pepperoni stick out of the jar no. that you would do in the big no, container. No, 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 no. No, no Slim Jim's here for me. Sorry. Oh, if I Instacart one right now, could it be here for the show's <laughs> Only if it's this long. Yeah. <laughs> I've had them, but they're not my favorite. No, I, I prefer the uh, the ones with the, the meat and cheese, you know? No. What's up with that? That's Just a good old pepperoni stick or a good chunk of jerky with the big black cracked pepper. Mm. That was kind of my thing at the convenience store. No, the Slim Jim, the yeah. with the, the stick with the cheese. It's really? that, it's that, it's that pasteurized. Yeah. Fake. It's, this, it's that the same stuff. cheese that it's comes. It's not even in the refrigerator. It's the same cheese that comes like in a Hillshire Farms right. uh, exactly. uh, box, and you smear it on with the mustard. Mm-hmm. Ooh, wasn't there the shelf a, stable? There was a wrestler who was the Slim Jim commercial that was, person. Yes, that was. I, I Rach- just imitated Macho him. Man oh, okay. Randy, Randy, Randy Macho Man Savage. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Why was I? Whatever why was do. I thinking that was? Um, it's savage. Not Hulk Hogan. I thought it was Hulk Hogan. No, 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 no. no. It was oh. He would have stooped that low. Oh well. <laughs> all right. Come on, I mean, okay. Boy, that's taking you back some. Were you a, a were couple you, years ago? Were you a WWF person? I was not. <gasps> uh, I'm, f- I'm familiar, but I, I didn't watch. Oh, WWF, WWE, WCW. No. Were you WCW? Oh, yeah, WCW. No. Yeah, there you go. Uh, no, I only did yeah. WWF. I watched it with my stepdad religiously on Saturday mornings. Never watched it. Never was a fan until I was in Alabama, and then my grandparents love wrestling. Oh yeah, because they, they don't wrestle. It's a whole it different thing in the south of wrestling. Oh, yeah. wrestling. Oh yeah, we're gonna watch wrestling. That was like the was it Monday night? In the Monday night rest? Was Monday it, night raw? It, it might have been Monday nights. We watched it yeah. on the twenty seventh zenith uh, yeah. television. Yeah. <laughs> Floor model, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> Floor model. No, she actually had the the one that was in the uh, inter- remember the entertainment center. Yeah. Back in the day, we used to have entire walls that were called an entertainment center. Yes. They were like nine hundred dollars for this piece of wood. And they had your little <laughs> stereo that was silver right. on yes. the front, yep. and then your big TV. But my other grandmother, she had the the console. The console. Television. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I thought that was so cool. Do you remember Elizabeth, his wife? That's definitely WWF. Wow, that oh. was a deep dive. I know. Savage. That was a deep dive. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Told different direction. I know. It's when they were starting to like have women on the show. And so they were eye candy on their arm. Draw more people in, viewers. Anyways, his wife's okay. name was Elizabeth. I, I, I never watched that. I was so much of a gearhead. So like mm. I really liked uh Monster Truck, like Monster Jam yeah. and all that. Yeah, I get it. Watching uh Bigfoot, obviously, take on Gold Digger and all that. Oh, Our yeah. Gr- Gold Digger? Grave no, Digger. Grave Digger. Grave digger. <laughs> yeah. Gold Digger, that was a different. <laughs> that was a kind of different song. <laughs> that was that's, a person. That's Hulk exactly. Hogan's wife. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh. I was a big fan on Saturdays of Wide World of Sports. 
Oh, I remember that. What? Wide World of Sports. Yeah. It was way before your time. Apparently. Yeah. yeah. <gasps> but they would show different sports that so we watch them all the time now, the ski jumping and, you know, all kinds of different sports at the time. We but had yeah, that every, like every sports. four years or so. It, 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 it was, like it that, was right? the, the, the interstitial <laughs> between the Olympics. They did the different different sports. Yeah. Huh. I, yeah. I got that, that exciting moment because oh, we were where we were last week. We were watching. I was watching TV at one of the bars, We'd never and they yeah. were reviewing American Gladiator. Oh, oh my gosh! Yes. They were doing a whole documentary. Yeah, on yeah. I was there's just going to say there's on a, Netflix. Netflix or Hulu? On yeah. American Gladiator. I haven't seen it yet, but I really want to. I'm like, oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid, that was a thing. Yeah. Right? Oh, see, I didn't watch. Yep. So I didn't watch American Gladiator um, as a kid. I mean, I, I'm sure I saw it at friends' houses or, or whatever. Just wasn't something we watched at our house. What we watched was Nickelodeon's version of it. Um, and it how was Nickelodeon allowed that to was have the that? Slime and the goo. No, and no, the no, no. That else. was that, you're not Double Dare 2000 or Double Dare. Oh. No, 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 Double no, Dare no. Mark yeah. Summers wasn't involved with this one. Okay. Uh, it was a <laughs> different one, and it was. Um, this is where it sucks being so much younger than all of you. Um, but I have kids your age. So they probably they had a, the show. Yeah, and they had like a tower you had to climb at the very end. Uh, oh, Mel Lee is sitting screaming at the radio right now because she knows or exactly what we're talking about. And I can't think of We've what it's called. We've got our intel over there. Is he Googling? I don't know. Nickelodeon? It's uh, something. Because it came on after <laughs> Legends of the Hidden Temple, which was so much fun. I, I just wanted to do that. My, like... Nickelodeon circa 1994 through 2002 was just all the things you want to do as a kid and just weren't able to. Yeah. Like, that was the definition of living vicariously. <laughs> it was just <laughs> all everyone do. Oh, we were there. We So Eric and I, my dad and my sister, we went to um, Disney for my sister's 40th birthday. Had a blast. Uh, went to Universal. Had a Been blast. a few years ago. Been a few years ago. A couple years ago. Uh, it was post COVID. Yes, people were still no. They just Disney had just gotten cleared to not wear masks the day we arrived. It was awesome, and uh, so we go to Universal. We're walking around, and I found it. I found the old new uh, Nickelodeon Studios wow. in Orlando, with the big slime fountain and all that stuff. Wow, it's completely painted over. It like you can still see the zigzags from like the nineties crazy styling, right. but it's all like painted. Now one color, so you you can just kind of barely make out what it is. The fountain's obviously completely gone. It's very depressing, but it was <laughs> like, man, this was such a big part of my life. Was like, oh, if I could just get to Universal and get in front of that fountain, then I could play one of these games. Uh, so, but it was cool to actually see it. I mean, cool. like it really is there. Yeah, guts. It was Nickelodeon guts. Thank you, uh, uh, producer Don. That was oh, guts was such a great show. Loved it. So I Jerry. Don't like that one. Had you ever seen American Gladiator? Yes, I loved it. So Patrick's the only one who hasn't. I've seen it. I just didn't watch it regularly. I didn't watch <coughs> it regularly, but I've seen it. It kind of leads me into the modern day American Ninja Warrior. Yes. Yeah. We're, we're big fans of that as well. Yeah. I've only seen it once or That's twice. That's a cool show. Is it good? If you like that kind of obstacle course thing, yeah. I really do. You should watch it. It Takes some perseverance, that's for sure. Yeah, for I love sure. people do it. doing it. Have you ever done one of those obstacle <coughs> courses or anything remotely I'm not like a, it? I'm not have I ever done? Uh, I'm, not <laughs> no. I'm not a no, parkour kind of girl. No. So I've. I bet you he's dodged tables to get to the coffee bar. <laughs> 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 you are correct. I've done. Um, I have done some of that. So back in the day in high school and college, I was uh, obviously in high school. I was. A teenager, so I did a lot of those like um, they, uh, events where they would have inflatable stuff, and they would have um, the thing that turned, and you had to run across it, or the uh, the classic American gladiators uh, where you're up on two posts. Oh, like the, the jousting, you, the jousting the thing. Oh, I've done that with Dalton. Which, by the way, I I don't know how I am now, but back then I was awesome. It was <laughs> that was one of my like high school. You know how you have those little high school moments where you're like, I won that day. Um, mm -hmm. Like just little, they're, sure. they're 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 ridiculous moments, but still you have them. Yeah, that was one of them for me. I was taking on uh, my arch enemy, who was the school's number one uh, gymnast, and he was like our school was um, number one in the state for gymnastics. So he's like really disgustingly good, very fit, ripped, does all that stuff. You know, all the throwing people in the air and all that. He does all that, and so we're on this thing. 
And I, at the time, I haven't tested it since, but I, at the time, had a really good balance. So, like, even though you hit me, I still could maintain my sure. composure. Right. And I was able to knock him off his little post, and everybody was just floored. Wow. They were wow. like, how did this, like, amazing person take on this, like, tall, lanky, with a little bit of a gut nerd? <laughs> And the nerd somehow won. Like it was, it was so much fun. I, I enjoyed it. We did it. it for Dalton's birthday. Do you remember that in his garage? We did the jousting. Yes, I do. On on wooden blocks. Yes. So we stood on on, you know, just rounds of wood. That was our balance, and we were jousting each other. And um, I was playing to his feelings, going, "You can't hit mom like that." And so, he would, and then he'd say something, or or we'd just be talking. Like I was trying to have a mom son conversation and get him all thinking something and then I'd take advantage and oof because he's very fit and, and he would have won instantly but I was playing to his feelings and uh, I, I think it was uh, best uh, three out of three I won there. <laughs> three out of three. Yeah. Well psychological warfare is allowed. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, it's completely absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. and he wasn't picking up what I was putting down until the end and and then and then he found you, you were putting him down. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was it was you know, uh, when I was in high school, we did, um, s- s- uh, oh, what do they call it? So the week of spring where you kind of do half-day classes and you do a lot of fun activities. Um, did you all do that kind of thing? Spring fling. Yeah, That's what they called it. it was for us, fling. it was just like a, a Friday afternoon. Okay, so ours was an all-week thing. You know, okay. there were specific days where you dressed up and you did whatever. And the more people that dressed up for your class age... You got points, and it was a whole victory thing at the end of the week. Um, you know, we did, like, lip-syncing contests. In the, every every afternoon, they had allotted time for an assembly. So every afternoon, there was some sort of an assembly. Um, talent show, lip-sync, whatever. Well, the very last day was field day. So they got the local fire department to come and hose you with their big hose from the fire yeah. truck and wheelbarrow races and whatever. Um, and this specific year, they decided to do <coughs> Base Yourself High School. Jello wrestling. Sure. So Why they not? did they did hay bales and a tarp and the kitchen staff did all this jello and they <laughs> did it by one person per class. And uh, I was a freshman that year. And they tied a balloon to your ankle. And the goal was to pop the other girl's balloon. And uh, when you get jello on a balloon, it doesn't pop. What color jello? I don't remember. <laughs> this is nineteen ninety ninety? Well, you only had orange, green, and red, uh, right? I wasn't afraid to use my teeth, so guess who's <laughs> the queen of jelly ah! wrestling? Uh, it was awesome. a lot of fun. That's it was awesome. a lot of fun. But that's about the only obstacle coursey thing I've done is uh, jello wrestling my freshman year. I don't know. I had to do the whole, like, pick up a greased pig. It was me and really? one other person. They set two greased pigs out, and we had to go pick them up and put them into their little thing. Wow. You ever try to pick up a greased pig? No. And it was a piglet, too. Oh. It was about that big, like the size of Callie, the, my sister's dog. I know that doesn't help you all at all, but. A little bigger uh, than Annie. She's been on the show. Yeah, a little bigger than Annie, and they literally just greased it down. I hope it wasn't bacon grease. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> but it's so difficult. They just slip right out of your hand. It was like Vaseline. Like imagine a pig just covered in Vaseline. Just as soon as you grab it, just right out, and he's freaking out like just completely uh freaking out and yeah it was uh and this happened in the city uh well so <laughs> that happened with uh, a group of my friends i was because i'm a city boy uh but i live country adjacent and so this happened in the country but it country was with all my adjacent. it was with all my city folk <laughs> friends <laughs> so there was suburban that's the one. Yeah, <laughs> suburban. suburban. Yes, nice. exactly. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, Two points for uh, Slim Jim. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's uh, funny. Uh, I miss those days. I so like I grew up with the day of like the inflatable, you know, uh, house was not just the bounce house anymore. They started doing newer and cooler things with those inflatables. Right, yeah. they put slides on them and yeah, exactly Velcro walls. And so I remember doing all that, like go to a lock-in or something, and they would take the gym and just put like four or five of those things in there. And you would do the whole, um, 
like you put yourself in this harness and it's attached to a rubber band Done and that. you try to run as far as you can. Right. Yep. Or they had one that was a 150 foot long obstacle course and that was the American Gladiator kind of thing. So along the whole course, you had all the stuff and it was two people going at it one by one. And have you done the so big, huge boxing boxing gloves, gloves on one of those air? F- I houses? did. I did one time for like two seconds. There, yeah. And me too. let me tell you a little secret about Patrick. I don't like pain at all. Thank God codeine and those harder drugs don't sit well with my stomach. Otherwise, I would have issues. Like, I just, I don't do pain. I I, I travel with a thousand count bottle of Advil. Um, and I just believe like, oh, I think I might be getting a heart headache. Advil. Like, I just don't do pain. And so, even with the big inflatable boxing gloves yeah there's a little element there of like oh that kind of hurts when yeah. a piece of plastic slaps you in your face right so i did that one time got hit once and was like i'm good i do not need this <laughs> <laughs> the boxers in the round ring just going at each other oh yeah no i can't knocking each other out i can't do that hey, I, you remember back even when with we, the gloves on like you said oh or back when we were in louisiana and i worked with um uh, <sighs> Who is it? Not W. Not not wrestling. But the other ones. UFC. Uh, UFC came to uh, Baton Rouge, and I went and ran sound for it. You know, as a, as the like I'm a sound guy. DJ's next to me, but I'm doing sound, so I'm taking care of the microphones of the presenters, and uh, the microphone for the DJ and the DJ's music. So he's still doing all the DJ work. I'm just controlling everything. So you're pretty close to the stage. Like you got a great view of it because you need to be able to see what's going on because at a second it'll change because it's acting, but it's not. And UFC was more not acting than acting. I did several w, uh, WWF stuff. That's our WWE. That was all. That's all scripted. But 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 UFC was l- very unscripted. And you would watch someone get hit, and just a splatter of blood would fly across the stage, and it's not fake. And it's like, oh, that's that's, that's not rough. for me. Mm-hmm. Um, that's and they were fine. They were like totally cool with it. And I'm like, mm mm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> I stubbed my toe, and I, I, for the next week, I avoid that whole area of my house. Like, <laughs> I just, ah, uh, it's it's crazy stuff. I, I don't. Mm. But now <laughs> you, they're all the same company now, aren't they? Are they were trying to be UFC and WWE? I know UFC was just bought out uh, recently in the last couple years. What did WWF or WWE or I, I know W. WCW and WWE, they became... They're one, yeah. Cause it, but that's what it was, right? WWF and w- WCW joined and made WWE? Oh, boy, well, there no. was some w- weirdness, WWF right? had to change their name because the World Wildlife Fund sued them. Oh, for really? Using the WWF <laughs> initials. Okay. Really? World Wildlife Fund had the trademark on that. Okay. And WWF lost, and they became WWE. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that's the reason they okay. changed. That hmm. is the reason they changed. Politely, of a different generation, did you have anything like... <laughs> <laughs> sprinkling in the city since you grew up in LA we both talked a little more rural well we've types. seen it we we saw but that I mean, did you have sprinklings Greece took place in LA didn't it can we <laughs> just talk about this whole of a different generation thing <laughs> for those of you who aren't watching he's got two she's got two evil eyes <laughs> staring at her <laughs> I'm not that much older than you. I'll be You're polite, not. and I won't tell your age, but I'm not that much older oh. than you. We just grew up in different environments. Uh, I don't recall a spring fling thing. Our school did different kinds of stuff, you know. Did, yeah. you, have the, did you have the fire no. truck come hose you down? No, we didn't have, that was oh. a waste of water in Los Angeles. You got <laughs> wastewater in L.A. <clears throat> yep. Come on. Let's be, oh, we had that in Baton Rouge. I believe it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah straight from the levee, probably. Tons of water. Straight, <laughs> from, straight from the canal. Actually, no, and in Baton Rouge, we had... Um, an, uh, an aquifer. Oh, okay. It's actually dying now, so I guess we should have been. <laughs> 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 like, in hindsight, maybe we should have not yeah, done right. half the stuff Ours we did. Ours is probably but, river water. Um, probably. Because they had that glacier rivers yeah. swimming through. Yeah. Yeah. We had river water, too, but she didn't want to mess with that. Yeah, but, but that was Mississippi is a little New, different. New Orleans <laughs> had river water. Baton Rouge actually had an aquifer that was like, you know, 12,000 years old or something. And, and our water consistently made the best in the country list and it was great water and we just abused it like yeah. crazy mm-hmm. and now they've discovered that guess what mississippi river water is now getting into that aquifer and, and poisoning it so yeah. uh, baton rouge has like it's not much but it's a lot it's like 80 sure. years left and 80 years sounds like a lot 
but it's not. But it's not. It, it's, yeah. it's really not. Right. So they have to figure out what they're going to do for their water, and they're probably going to have to build some plants like New Orleans does and hmm. and do that. But uh, which when when you're taking water out of the ground and you're adding the legally required amount of chlorine and fluoride, and that's all you're doing to it, you get water dirt cheap. When you're processing river water, that water bill goes to the roof. Sure. So sure. there, uh, there's gonna be a lot of happy people in Baton Rouge in the next fifty years. But eh, it is what it is. You abuse your resource, and that's what yeah. happens. So I'm I'm right there at the cusp of uniforms. Like elementary school, I had no uniforms. Middle school, I had uniforms. High school, I didn't. Uh, but I was the only school in Baton Rouge that didn't have uniforms. Hmm. Every other school did. Wow. And so for us, we were like the last. And and by the way, that school that I went to still doesn't have uniforms. It's it's like a liberal, crazy, fun school, and they still don't have uniforms. We did things like you know, like because our, our we were the Bulldogs, and and it was very Irish uh, school, which is funny because now I live in Dublin, which is Irish, um, and I'm from Ireland, and I have a red beard. Uh, but I, <laughs> I but we did things like pirate, or but we did things like. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like I sprayed paid my hair green one week a year every single year. Yeah. And I think that's the same time frame you'd be talking sure. about. Yeah. I mean, so we did kind of have that where I think like the schools with uniforms, they really put a lot more emphasis on it because it was their only time they could come to school not in uniform. That makes sense. Whereas for us, it was like, well, it's every day. I can wear whatever I want any right. day I want. Right. So it wasn't as exciting. Sure. I, don't know. I think for us... We didn't do it in the spring. We did it during homecoming week. That's when we got to do and wear the special spirit week or unusual whatever they call things. Them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did, we didn't. So my school it was a magnet school, and we didn't have uh, football, basketball, or baseball. We had everything else, but not those three sports. So we didn't really get the homecoming week. I, I, so I you had out on sports that. like badminton and shuffleboard, wrestling, gymnastics, ice soccer, hockey. chess. We had soccer back when soccer was like who plays soccer. Of course, now everybody plays soccer. Well, soccer was that way when I was a kid. Yes. AYSO, my neighbors across from my best friend growing up, they played soccer. So, I mean, soccer's been that way for it a was, long time where everyone plays it as a kid, but as you get older. Oh, no. See, no. And, and, and maybe it's different in South Louisiana. Like, there was no elementary school kids, middle school kids playing soccer. It literally was like a high school thing. Hmm. Wow. And now it is. Now, like, I've got friends of mine that are, coaching their kids like four and five year olds or maybe maybe a little older maybe eight year olds playing soccer like that didn't exist back when i was a kid baseball did but not soccer jerry you weigh in did you have spring fling we did i never participated (laughs) i don't like being outside (laughs) did your high school have sports yeah you know football Football was huge. I mean it's the south (laughs) exactly you can't not how many were in your graduating class just curious um, I don't know. I didn't graduate high school, so I ended up. Let me put my foot in that one. I, I quit my junior year and went to the community college and got my GED. Oh, well, that's because you're smart. That's not fair. Okay, so let me rephrase it. How many was average in a class, roughly? Uh, hundred. Oh, so a smaller it's school. A lot smaller. Yeah, that's about no the did. size of mine. High school. No that's did. that's so funny. At my school was, I think I was three hundred and eighty. We graduated, and and, and, and the school was too. fourteen hundred or fi- uh, sorry, it's about sixteen hundred people in the school. Oof. And uh, but my graduating class was like three eighty ish or something. And I've got friends in Texas. They're like, I, I was we were at twelve hundred seniors, yeah, and I'm like, oh okay. <laughs> there were five thousand people at my high school. I'm like, how many were in yours? I don't have any idea. Oh, it was big. How about you? Sixty nine. Graduating? Yes. Wow. We were the last double-digit class to graduate from. After that, it was single? No, it was triple after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Can you imagine sitting through a graduation ceremony with 200-plus people? No. You, are you calling all their names? Yeah, or you, yeah, you walk up, you, you get your diploma, oh, and walk no, across three, stage. 200 people, yeah, that'd be great. It'd be half the time. Yeah. 380? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I come from a graduating with 100. So I can imagine sitting through a 200-person graduation I was, ceremony. No and you just talked about Texas being up in the fives. I can't imagine. I can't imagine sitting there for thousands of people. Now, They're I, like, A through A through G, right. you're going to meet on Saturday. Yes. Yeah. Everybody else meet on Sunday. <laughs> well, that's how – so, like, people got upset because uh, when I graduated high school, my uh, 
my class graduated from our theater. We were the last last class that actually graduated from our high school theater. Everybody else uh, after that graduated at a at a larger auditorium. But our theater at our school and our school was built in nineteen. 19- 12 or something like that. It was dedicated to the to the people that fought in the World War. There was no concept right. of World War II. Um, it was a very old school, which I love. It was very cool. Um, and, and, and I love having all that heritage behind my school. So the theater, like, we were the last ones to graduate in our theater, and I think the theater set, like, 1,500 people or so, 16, wow. maybe, maybe, maybe closer to 2,000. So each person only got, like, three or four tickets right. to graduation. That was it. And, and people hated that because... Like, my sister graduated from a, a place that had 5,000 seats. And so everybody was just invited. There was no tickets. So my, you know, all my family went, my grandparents, everybody, all our friends went. Um, well, my graduation was at a football, uh, in our football stadium at the school. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of schools do that. But we still had limits to number of tickets. Like, maybe it was four, I think, maybe. But oh, wow. we still had limits on who, you know, how many people you could bring. Oh, my sister, you, you, Bethany World Person or North Campus, did you ever go to the North Campus in Baker? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that place many was, times. Yeah, huge. That's where Melissa graduated. So, like, everybody could go. It was no, who cared? Um, and so we got three tickets, I want to say. Or maybe four tickets, maybe. I don't know if it's normal for schools to do this, but they did do it by, um, like, what number you were in the – so the dumbest oh, person really? went last. Yeah. <gasps> um, Sweet. Are you serious? Yeah. And I was, like, 120 or something out of 380, and I was like, whoo, thank God. But I went to a magnet school. And half the school was performing arts. Half the school was um, academic. So you had some, like, people who were amazingly performing arts, and they could care less about academics right. and, and vice versa. Right. So it, it, it was it was very strange the mm. way it, it kind of all played out. But it was it was a lot of fun. Ours was alphabetical by last name. I think it's how most people are. Yeah. That's what happens when you go to an elitist school. I think we were in and out in like an hour. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. No, I can't imagine. (laughs) Anywho, so how's your week been? It's been a great conversation (laughs) about gladiators. (laughs) I know, right? This kind of took a a tangent. I got to ask a question. So this morning, uh, I had to, uh, last night, I took a truck out to Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, Some of our trucks uh, have this little baby window over the kitchen. Not all of them do, but some do. And uh, the manu- the company that manufactured that window has actually been having an issue where they're um, coming delaminated, or basically unglued, the glasses. So you got to go and get them replaced. Uh, it's a big recall. It's, it's a pain in the neck, but whatever. So I took a truck out there uh, last night and dropped it off first thing in the mo- or first thing in the morning. Take it like an hour and back on the road again. Um, and I had a great drive out there. It was easy peasy. Uh, got to my usual hotel. Watched Thor. Um, and then, uh, was able to knock that out in the morning and then drive back and, and, uh, I had it hit a little bit of snow on the way home, just a little bit, not much, but uh, you know, it was a great morning. I, I, great evening, no issues, not a lot of weather. Everything was fantastic. So imagine my surprise when I opened up my Facebook before I left Fort Wayne, Indiana and saw Jerome Barrow's post. <laughs> Sounds like you had an exciting morning. <laughs> it really was. Like, <laughs> so normally we get up around 5.30 a.m., woke up at 5 o'clock because of my phone going off and an alert. And at first whenever I woke up and I heard it, and I was just like, that was weird. And it didn't really register. And then Don woke up and he's like, do you hear that? The sirens are going off. And I'm like, what? What? He's like, the <laughs> sirens, the tornado sirens are going off. And I'm like, what? What? I'm jumping up out of bed. We're both getting dressed. He's going downstairs. He's literally lollygagging and taking his time. I'm, like, running around making sure my cell phone's charged. I'm grabbing the laptop. I'm looking out the window. He's turning on the TV, taking his sweet time, walking into the kitchen. (laughs) And I'm just, like, looking out the window, and I'm, like, kind of freaking out. And I'm, like, do we go to the basement? Do we start taking shelter? Like, what do we do? This one's in the kitchen making coffee. (laughs) Now, if anybody knows me, they know that we absolutely love our coffee. And, um... It was quite funny because a little bit later, whenever it did pass and all the warnings were done, let me back up a little bit. They were saying on TV, like, if you're in Upper Arlington, which we are, they were like, you need to take shelter shelter immediately. Like, it was really, like, nerve-wracking to me, yeah. you know? And uh, whenever the threat finally did pass, though, it was funny because Don looks at me and he's like, the only thing I could think of is I was just hoping the coffee would brew fast enough before the power went out. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, uh, yeah. I feel you. Yeah, so we, we woke up when the, the alarm was going off, and I went and used the bathroom. And I come back out and think to myself, I should probably put some clothes on just in case the house is gone. <laughs> I'm not that guy standing in, you know, rubble with a house around me, the helicopter shooting pictures of me in my drawers and, you know, a t shirt <laughs> no or something, no shoes. So, cup of coffee. Got dressed and um, meandered downstairs. If you know me, I meander. And she was already down there. I meandered downstairs and I closed the door upstairs behind me, get downstairs, and she's like, oh, we should probably close that door too, huh? So I hop on the computer. That's my office down there. So I yeah. hop on the computer. She's got her, her phone going with weather and stuff. And I don't know. We've done it for about a half an hour. And she goes, huh, what if the coffee's ready yet? <laughs> <laughs> I had pushed. So normally it goes off at 6 to start brewing. But, again, we were all up at about 530. 5.30, yeah. And on my way, my way down, I actually turned it on before the alarm, <laughs> thinking <laughs> the same thing. Maybe the coffee will be brewed when this is all done and I can get a cup of coffee. Oh. You see those people oh. on the Weather Channel. They're in their robe. They got the slippers on, a cup of coffee. coffee. Their house is yeah. completely gone. gone. Yeah. It's it's three acres down the road. I yeah. mean, and, and they're like, we'll see what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Was, uh, and it's, uh, that's. Yeah. I just want you to know, at least in our household, we did take it seriously. Um, our alarms go off at right around the six o'clock mark. Maybe even 6.30. His alarm, internal alarm goes off well before that. But um, we knew the storms were coming in. I, I'm sure you did too, Jerry. Yes. Uh, we were being very weather conscious. Uh, we were tracking what times and hours they could be hitting. Um, but I did the same thing. We, When you got up to, to use the restroom and then I heard the sirens, I'm like, the wind was so hard, it almost blew the siren sound not Away. it did yeah. and i said i think that's the sirens and uh i said I i'm gonna also use the restroom but i'm also getting dressed at the same time kind of thing um also to put shoes on for just in case um and then we took annie downstairs and we just kind of monitored the radars and the weather channel but definitely uh it was it was brewing up something out there you know, I lived in Mississippi for a sh few years, and they had sirens and tornado sirens and all that down there, and I had heard it. But the majority of my life growing up, I lived in the mountains. You don't have tornado Me too. sirens. Yeah, right. Me too. You know, you don't have to worry about tornadoes. Like, S Yeah, same thing in South Louisiana. We had uh, those alarms, but those alarms weren't for tornadoes. They were actually for the uh, chemical plant if there was an issue at ExxonMobil. Because if you look at uh, a map of Baton Rouge and you look at ExxonMobil, it's... 30, 35% of the city is ExxonMobil. It's one plant. It's huge. It's a giant refinery. It's I think it's the largest refinery in North America. It's massive. And so they have those alarms around the refinery, not out where I lived, uh, but that was one of the, talk about my school. So one of the weird things about living uh, or going to school downtown Baton Rouge was every Wednesday we heard those alarms go yeah. off at noon. Yeah. Um, but there were no tornadoes. Like, we didn't have tornadoes growing up in Baton Rouge. Like, that didn't exist. No. And one thing, hurricanes. Oh, yeah, we had hurricanes. Uh, but not tornadoes. So when we moved up here, it's like, holy cow, in the first several we had, it, you hear that alarm go off, and it's immediately run to the basement, which should be the response. Should be. When you see, like, some of these places in Kansas or Oklahoma or getting, uh, Ohio, Missouri? Getting, Missouri getting closer to home, Ohio and Indiana, you know, those alarms go off, we should immediately go to the basement because you hear, like, this place had 38 seconds yep. right. of notice right. before they got hit. And it should be our response, but we're so cultured to the false alarm deal. Right. It actually, I, I was going to tell you, but I decided not to. I was going to wait till the show uh, when we talked, me, me and Melissa talked earlier today. My, uh, at the hotel I was at, the fire alarm went off. I've been at that hotel. So, like, it's my go-to hotel every time I go to Fort Wayne, Indiana. It's funny because I like the hotel because it was renovated because it caught fire several years ago. <laughs> it used to not be my hotel. It caught fire several years ago. Like, since I was a driver, it caught fire, burned an entire wing. So now you kind of probably know what the hotel I'm talking about because it faces the interstate. They've renovated the hotel. and It's actually kind of nice now because of that. So it's a hotel that has caught fire. I've been there probably four times where the fire alarm has gone off. So now, last night, the fire alarm went off while I'm in bed. Like, I'd literally just turned Thor off. Uh, and I, because Thor went to like 1 a.m. and I was like 12.30. I'm like, I'm done. I got to go to sleep. 
So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go to bed. And I'm laying there, and like 15 minutes after, I'm like, close my eyes, try to go to sleep. What? 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 And I'm like, oh, my gosh, the freaking fire alarm's going off. And I'm like, there's been false alarms before. Let me see what happens. <laughs> so I just laid in the bed Start for like, sniffing. I laid in the bed for like 30 seconds, and the alarm does go off. It was a false alarm. But it's like, if it was a real alarm, yeah. what are those 30 seconds that I just laid Crazy. in bed? Yeah really you know accomplish see for me that's how it was in la with earthquakes you don't get the alarm you feel it and you go okay it's going to be a small one and it keeps going you go, okay maybe i should get up and go stand in the door jam and it gets big enough you go do that otherwise you're just going to lay there and go okay it's stopping i'm okay yeah you know wow uh, you i was thinking maybe alarm. next time i might uh if we know they're coming i might sleep in pajamas be more prepared. Or, or even if we know that, because we did know that storm's coming. I, well, sure. We even pushed back a move in today. We did. Yes. I and, pushed back a move in today. And when I, I was concerned about that. And when I volunteered to take the truck to Bolt yesterday, right. Melissa even mentioned there's bad storms coming. Are you sure you want to go? I looked at the weather, and it showed Fort Wayne was not going to have Why the weather. Why did you get credit for that? I said that. Was it you? Yes. <laughs> I was the one that was weather conscious yesterday. I am so sorry. You are because you did push back the team. I did. Okay. And the so, team was also weather conscious too. So the storm was coming and, and it was mentioned to me that like, are you sure you want to go because the storms are, are coming? And I looked on the radar and it showed that Fort Wayne was not going to have crazy bad weather. Right. It's got bad weather, but not crazy bad weather. And the times, oh, it was you we were talking about. Yeah. Okay. I apologize. I'm sorry about that. It's okay. Um, it's all right. I'm good the, for something. The, 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 the times I would be traveling. The storm wasn't going to be right. Out no, because yet. it was in the middle no. of the night and early morning. Exactly. So it, I was like, I see yep. a time; it, it'll work out here. Let me do it. And so I did. And I was joking with Melissa. I'm like, I had the safest of all of y'all. Like, did. I got out of town before the storms got bad. If you can imagine a map, Chicago is like north central. Uh, Columbus is like east. And Fort Wayne's kind of in the middle, and Fort Wayne got no weather. Yeah. Like, it split yeah. at Indianapolis, or, or a little before Indy, Indi and yeah, bad before. weather went to Illinois and, and hit Chicago. Bad weather hit Columbus, and we got, and like, a little Wayne bit alone. of rain, a hint of rain, a little yeah. rain. That whole storm this morning just tracked I-70 all the oh, way what? across. It hit Springfield, I think, a, li a light Tornado, I think, hit down. They had a lot of damage. It might be more than the light because the Air Force uh, Museum I saw that. got Outside hit pretty hard. I saw that. That's sad. And then it came right across. And then for our area, it was Hilliard. It was downtown Columbus. So literally yeah. tracking right across 70. So it was downtown Columbus is where it was starting to hook. Like on the Doppler, I was watching it. And then yeah. a little bit in Obitz. And then it just kicked right on out across 70. And then it was going to be Ga uh, Gahana and Pataskala. So, again, the east side. It was just going right across the 70. It hit Hilliard hard. It actually hit a little north of Roberts Road, which is where our yard is. Yeah. So, um, yep. a little a little more to the west, but still same road. And uh, I, I by the time I saw that report, I knew everything was fine from our end. But then I started seeing the reports and the pictures coming in. I'm like, wow, that's that's really close to home. You and Don live a little further south than Patrick and Eric and, and Vince and I do. Like cl closer to the I-70 corridor. I don't know how you want to say that. Yeah. Do you, do you find that you got a lot of wind damage? I mean, I know the tornado didn't or a tornado didn't happen. But do you find like that you got a lot of wind damage? Where we are actually at, I don't think we experienced anything. I mean, there were some trees blown around in the yard out front because uh, the city of Upper Arlington was actually coming through like probably like three hours later. And they were picking, picking up, up tree debris, branches yeah. and throwing them in the chipper and stuff like that. But I don't think it was anything bad. I think most I of the of. weather that I always find is always like just right at the 70 yeah. and a little lower. Yeah. Or it swings a little higher and goes up like Marysville, and then it kicks out above into Delaware. Like, for some reason, I feel like Dublin area is kind of always a miss. I so know when I'm going on ELW. Knock on wood. And it's, there's a little bit, of, <laughs> little bit of rain. When you turn south off 270 onto 71, just south there, like half a mile down, it's just horrible. It's like everything goes right through there for some yeah. reason. It's just bad. But Well, it is interesting. So, like... 
I agree with you. It Dublin. I think I'm pretty confident. So like, like I don't mind telling people I live in Dublin. No, I don't try, either. Try to find me. Uh, it's a big city. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, but so the, our yards in Hilliard, and we live in Dublin. It's we're on a hill. I do know that for a fact. So um, we've never really talked about it on this podcast before, but I'm taking flight lessons. I am learning to fly a plane. God help me. And um, so there's there's two airports, OSU, which is in Dublin, which is what I fly out of, and there's Bolton, which is um, a little south of Hilliard. And there's like a 150-foot elevation difference yeah. between the two. Yeah. Um, it Dublin OSU Airport is even higher than uh, CMH, which is the main airport here in wow. Columbus. So there is an elevation change, and I can't help but wonder if it's just subtle enough that – the storms it could be move could it be. could be like it it's so yeah. weird because i mean there's been days where it's been like a nightmare down at the at the lot right. and it's like what is happening yeah. and then you get up here and the streets are dry yeah like dry there's and you, other and, the, and it's vice versa we have had it's not often but we've had storms here where i've talked to to chili and been like did you even bother going into work today and he's like why would I bother going to work today? He's like, because I'm like, it's storming. He's like, it's bone dry here. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, we yeah. had a band of weather that came through a little while ago, but it was just a rain yeah, and quit. And I'm like, let's, like, I'm watching my trees, hoping they don't fall in the yeah. house. Yeah. So it's, I, it I is. And you guys they are on never kind of the, the same of floor. Dublin. Yeah. Where, where you're at, you're, you're. You're not far there. from the OSU airport, are you? No, he's not. No, he's not. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. He probably hears you fly over and yell his name every time you fly over. <laughs> it's not that often, yeah. but yeah. No, we we go we go to work prepared for weather, you know. Yeah. Long johns, rain gear, whatever it takes. What well, today was weird because I had I had everything. <laughs> I had my heavy heated jacket was, and my rain gear. I was about to say, yeah. can we just say how crazy the weather is? Because it was just in the 60s, and now tomorrow is supposed to be like down in the 30s with wind chill. Uh, this morning, it's when l- the alarm went off, uh, the sirens. It was the sirens <laughs> at 5:30. It was 65 degrees outside. Yeah. By and that was 5:30. By, by 7:30, yep. it was down to 50. By 11, it was high 30s. And it got colder and windier as the day went. It it, it was not a pleasant day outside. And that's, I today. think, the whole reason that those the storm happened or the tornado warnings happened because it was that cold front and right and Being warm. warm. Yeah. And that's and that's what they predicted. But yeah. it is it is spring. We learned that this is our second spring here. It's your guys's first. Oh, I see what second. you're saying. Second. We moved yeah. here end of January. It wasn't. So, so th- this is this is the first faux spring. Of 24. Yes. Yeah. Because we'll have like three or four yeah. fake springs before spring actually well, sets in. My time hop yesterday actually showed me recording tornado warnings. I may or may not have been standing outside looking at it. Uh, tornado, the actual sirens were going off for an actual tornado. You were here though, weren't you? No, no, no. no, no. That you was at our house. We were a year ago. So it was one year ago yesterday yeah. on my, my Facebook memories. It showed me recording that we were having tornadoes. In our area, I do think that they went north up into Delaware that year. I think so. Last year. So let me ask you: It was sixty what this morning? Five. Sixty-five. What is it right now? Don't look. I'm gonna guess twenty-four. I'm gonna go twenty-seven. I'll go a little higher: twenty-eight, twenty-nine. I'll go thirty-one. Twenty-six. So I win. Isn't it nuts? It's crazy. It was, it was you know it's crazy. You know what's, this do you know what's even crazier? It's gonna get colder next yeah. week. Yeah. In the next week, yeah. 72, 72 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> 72 degrees. And I'm yeah. like, I can't wait. We're back in the Bring 50s it. tomorrow. It, I know this weather pattern has been it's so ridiculous. strange. Ridiculous. So strange. And when I left Fort Wayne, it was freezing. It was snowing. And I drive down here, and, and it, it actually dried up, which is great. Like, if you're driving, it could be negative 10. If it's dry outside, who cares? Yeah. Right. yeah. It'll be good. It, it, it was 70 degrees in that cab. That's all I cared about. Mm-hmm. I get down to uh, Mary's, yeah, Marysville. And it's just snowing like crazy. And I'm like, <laughs> and by that time it was like 42 degrees. And I'm yeah. like, why is it 42 degrees and snowing like crazy? I mean, it, as soon as it touched anything, it went to water. But still, I was like, this is so crazy. Insane. Then I get to the lot, bone dry. Yeah. Hmm. I, just this Ohio weather, coming from Louisiana, this Ohio weather is odd. It is. It's very odd. It is. You remember last spring, the trees were blooming. Uh, leaves were getting, trees were getting their leaves back. 
trees were blooming in the front yard, and all of a sudden they had a snow freeze storm yeah. come through. Yep, that's right. Killed a bunch of trees. The trees that did live were drooping over. We had <laughs> take it. We had take an entire tree out of the front yard. Yeah. It it completely decimated that. It was a beautiful tree. I loved it, and it uh, the snow and ice because it, it it got leaves, and the snow and ice came, and when it did, it just put too much pressure and it pulled a, a limb over. Which it was a, it was a small enough tree that it was like a third of the tree bent over, and we were hoping to try to like get it back, and it just see it didn't kill the tree, just the weight of it for so long until the ice finally melted, yeah, left a permanent drag, like a droop right. on the tree, and it yeah. just wouldn't grow back straight it up. Wouldn't, it wouldn't grow back straight up, and then it started getting into the driveway, and it was like yeah. we don't have a choice but to pull it down. It was devastating, but it's uh, I hope that doesn't happen this year. Right. We don't we don't have anything that small this year. Like all of our small trees have been killed off by either the deer <clears throat> or the uh <laughs> or the or the snow and ice. Uh, everything we got now is big f- healthy trees. So even if it does happen it'll be should be fine. But I'm glad I missed all the weather y'all had and the excitement. Uh <laughs> <laughs> but um I did want to talk about something last week and I had a couple or two weeks ago and I had a couple people reach out and they're like, Something's weird about you and I wanted to let y'all know. Uh, a couple years, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, I decided to that we finally we're in Ohio, like in an area long enough that I'm like, I should do something with my teeth, and I went and got braces. Um, huh. I got really cool ones. They're not the clear ones that what are they called? The Invisalign. They're not Invisalign, um, but they are um, like. Clear ceramic, and there's just one little line that you can see, and it's been like that for the past couple of years, and it's been great, and I love it. And I thought that was all I was going to get. And then three weeks ago, I went to the orthodontist to have a my usual checkup or whatever, and he's like, yep, you're ready. What are you ready for? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. I, I they, thought I was already doing it. I thought so, too. And they pulled off this little contraption they had in the back of my mouth. He couldn't see it. And... uh they went all full metal braces on my bottom teeth and my the top the back half of my top ones. So I still have my ceramics in my very front, but I have metal everywhere else. I don't know how to feel about this. Oh, at first it hurt. Oh man, yeah, so, uh, so you had bad, mentioned so that. bad. Oh, it was, I mean, like four Advil every three hours, like hurt. Uh, it, by far the most painful thing I've done yet, and. Um, since then, that pain's thankfully gone away. It's so weird. Have y'all had braces? I did. Yes. No. No. I feel like my bottom lip is massive, and I have wires poking me. <laughs> Why do you have wires poking you? You shouldn't have any wires poking you. Well, I didn't at first. Obviously, it's, it's working, and my teeth have moved. They did say as your teeth move, yep, the wire could come out. Yep. So it is it is poking me a little bit. Wax, wax. Oh, I've got wax. Wax is your friend. Oh, I, if you looked at my mouth right now, I could light a candle. Yep. Um, <laughs> wax is your friend. Like, it is. Uh, I bought it in bulk, yep. and I'm nervous I didn't get enough. It's uh, it's unbelievable how weird this sensation is, and the way I talk when I listen back to the last couple episodes of myself, I'm like, oh man, you could definitely tell something's changed, like. It just sounds so different, and at least in my head, it it's probably minimal. It is minimal, but still, I notice it, and I'm like, oh, it kills me. It's just so strange. I know you have some longevity on it, but the feeling when you get them off for like the first month will be licking your teeth all the time. Oh yeah, I, I mean, like the front of my teeth just feel all like, of it. <laughs> yes, I feel. I, I, when I as as I first got it, I showed Eric. He's like, oh my god, your jaws. And I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Is it? What's it's the name of the character? Jaws. On Jaws. On yeah. the Bond movie? Yeah. yeah. Jaws. Okay. I'm like, that's what yeah. you get for forcing. Not what you wanted that's to hear. I'm sorry. That's what you I'm get sorry. for forcing him to watch James Bond. Yeah. Sure. Like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but coming from in the first step, from the very first step when it first started, you come a long way. Oh, my gosh. It, and it's completely. He still it, cries just as much as he did when he first got him. It hurts me to look at old pictures. I'm amazed at how bad it was like i knew it was bad but it just it just i'm just shocked i really am shocked it has come a long way and that's why they hurt and yeah exactly it's It's, because they're moving your teeth and it's not like it's not like my gums are rubber and they're just moving it's bone 
Yeah. They're literally moving a bone inside of a bone. Oh. So anyways, um, that new thing has changed. And like I said, I've had a few people reach out, so I wanted to let you all know that's what's up. I'm trying to get used to it. I, I'm three weeks in. I'm starting to get used to it. I mean, obviously, I, I'm going to have to go in every few weeks and have a new um, wire. wire put in. That's obviously going to cause more pain each time I do it. Um, but, yeah, and I've got a couple rubber bands I have to put in there. I take them out for the video because it actually it makes me slur too much. So I do pop them out just for this, but I put it back in as soon as I'm done. Would you open be open to comments from the audience? Things I would to help you. I would love any if you've had if you absolutely if you've had braces before and you've got tricks or or anything up your sleeve or how to make the pain go away, how to adapt to a uh, little thing sticking you in your gums. I know the technology has come a long way, but there's still little pieces of metal that stick out and they grab. I had one the other day. I woke up and. Uh, I guess just the way I was sleeping, I kind of did a, a yawn, and when I did, I felt a rip in my the side of my mouth from where a little piece had just kind of like been sitting there all night. And as soon as I did, it just ripped out. Oh, oh, it hurt. Um, thankfully, it only hurt for a little bit, and then it was done. But I've had a couple times where it just like I'm using um, it's not Ambisol, but it's kind of like Ambisol. Is that what you call or it? Gel? Yeah, maybe yeah, or gel. Sorry, right. kind of like or gel, but it's not or gel. Something melts, and it helps tremendously if I get a sore spot. Nice. Um, but oof, man, I just. So yeah, you'll leave some comments, <sighs> suggestions. Absolutely, if you've been through experience. I know, uh, Melissa, you and I have talked about it a lot. A little th trips, yep. there are tricks here and there. But Chewing gum, which, I mean, I know that you've got rubber bands. You got to time it, you know. Yeah. And I'm not talking like all day chew gum, but I remember. Um, with Dalton, my youngest, they would give him a a note for school that he was allowed to chew gum at school because it was a no gum chewing school. Yeah, and uh, but they gave him a note that he had to be able to chew it because it when you when you chew it moves your it keeps your teeth moving, I guess, or your bone. That and, makes sense. And um, it helps relieve the pain from a new wire. I could see that. So again, not chewing gum all the time, but like in that yeah. first, as soon as you get it for like a first couple hours to a day. For me, as soon as I put anything in my mouth with the rubber bands, it just gets tangled up and it becomes a problem. Sure. Well, but, again, you can't chew it with rubber bands, but yeah. yeah. And I'm trying so hard to keep those on. I'm like, I just want to sure. get it right, get it done, and be done with it. But um, I actually broke a, um, I broke a bracket off already. Lovely. What are you eating? Apples? Caramel popcorn? <laughs> you kidding. would think. <laughs> Saltine cracker. Oh, you're eating, <laughs> you're eating Optivia. Well, I guess we'll talk about that. <laughs> I was trying to lead you in there, that segue. <laughs> it's not been a good couple of weeks. Um, a lot of stuff going on. I've kind of fallen off the wagon a little bit. Not terrible. It's not detrimental. Nothing we can't get back. But my my way in this morning was 279.5 or 7. What was last time? 277. So okay. I've gained a couple pounds, y'all. Uh, again, it's, I promised when I started this, I was going to be honest. Um, there's been some, uh, a lot of additional stress over the last couple of weeks, some things that have gone not well, and I've just fallen off the wagon a little bit. There's no other way to put it. Um, and I need to get back on and, and I am, I am, I am getting back on, um, and I am starting to get progress again. I think that's, I'm a very emotional eater and when things go sideways, that's my comfort. And, uh, I kind of dug into that for a little bit over the last couple of weeks and, and shouldn't have. But I'm, I, like I said, I am getting better. I'm getting back on Octavia, or back on, I am back on Octavia, I should say. I am back to my, my normal plan, and because and, I did actually, I think I ballooned up for like 281 or so, so I am, I am getting like 279 is a little bit of a shade sure. back down. Yeah, so that's just a bit of honesty. And um, I, I think that's human though, right? It's, it's part of being human, and we, we, we're not always 100% at our best physically or emotionally. And sometimes we have those things where we fall back to our comfort zone. Absolutely. We do. So yeah, it's, it's challenging always. No, it's a hundred, hundred percent correct. And, um, you know, I'm glad I have a support group. I'm glad I have people in my life that can say, Hey, what's happening? Why are you, what's, what's going on here? Um, that definitely helps. Yeah. Um, I'm glad to be taking the steps to get back on, but you know, 
it is what it is. It's been a rough few weeks. I'm glad that time does help. Um, but that does bring us to our uh, daily fueling, our fueling of the week. Yeah, which one are you choosing today? So the fueling of the week is by far my absolute favorite. Those of you that know me since I was uh, a little kid, s'mores are my Ooh. weakness. So. I love s'mores. I did a lot of camping as a kid, made a lot of s'mores. Love them, love them, love them, love marshmallows, love chocolate, love graham cracker. What could go better? So we have Campfire S'mores Bar by Octavia. This is, uh, it, it's like um, the bottom's all chocolate. Then the core of it is like the uh, puffed rice, you yes. call. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it's got a chocolate drizzle on top, and it's got, uh, uh, but, but the rice has like a graham cracker flavor to it. And then the, uh, the chocolate drizzle on top, and then it's got actual little marshmallows in it uh, all over the top. And um, it's so good. It's so good. 110 calories. Again, it's nutritionally similar to all the other ones we've been pointing out. And uh, this right here, this is comfort food in a little basket. This is so good. I have yet to get tired of these. I just, when uh, when Octavia actually, I was with Octavia before they came out with these. When they came out with these, I was like, holy cow, it's a limited time, limited time only release. It's since been put on the permanent menu. And um, I love them. I think they're outstanding. And that's the one for the day, or for the week. Um I always get like two or three boxes of these every month uh, because they're just so stinking good. They're easy too. They're good, easy to go. Yes, they are. This is a, so. This is the first bar I've shown y'all, right? It is. Yeah. It so is. this is about. So they they. Uh, I was gonna say it's about the size. It is. They are, but they do change. Believe it or not. So uh, some of them are a little denser, and so they're a little smaller. And some of them are a little actually a little bigger than this. Um, it just depends on what their composition is and what they're made up because they are hitting that same. Calorie, carb, fiber, protein marks. And so, um, depending on what it's made of, they do actually change it. Because they, one thing I like about Octavia is with their bars, they use a lot of real ingredients, I will say. So, like, if you get a peanut butter bar, you get actual peanut butter. Sure. You don't get peanut butter flavored soy. If you, you know what I mean? Like, things like that. Because they're using real ingredients, they do adapt their size according to right. the portion control that's necessary to uh keep you on plan right so that's the uh that's the one of the day great stuff again five if i wanted five of these i could have five of these two and a half hours apart and a leaning green and be golden yeah disclaimer not recommended to hold over a fireplace <laughs> yes yeah, so they, 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 yeah that's what's nice about those there's no no cooking involved nothing but i wouldn't recommend cooking them because they do have that chocolate so you get them a little warm they're gonna melt yeah. and that's also another thing is disclaimer if you have that don't keep it in your pocket no, that it will i not. have yes i have learned that that is not or a good in the car our car yeah so like yeah. i've actually we, we've done um hikes and things like that I, like out in georgia we went and uh with kelly and jimmy we went and did a, a, a hike to a falls waterfalls which is beautiful and uh but if you just like throw one in your pocket because you know you're going to be longer than your two and a half hours and you want to have uh, a bar when you get to your waterfall. You're going to be licking the wrapper? Yes, you'll be licking the wrapper. <laughs> It'll melt. So, But they do have them that don't have the chocolate or the peanut butter on them. So when we get to those, we'll I'll point that out. But uh, great one. Outstanding. It will melt. Be careful. Well, should we talk some trucking business of any kind? Yes. What do you have? Um, oh, Me. I like how you throw that back on me. Um, I read an article, and I was pretty amazed by it, um, that the world's, world's first fully autonomous truck yard is now operating in Texas. I thought world. Because, you know, as a truck driver, we drive by a lot of signs that say world's best lasagna, world's best taco. I always really want to know if it's world's best. But this is the world's first fully autonomous truck yard uh, is now operating in Texas. What's what's autonomous about? Is it the uh, the 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 yard the, uh, dogs? The yard dogs. Okay, thank you. The yard dogs are fully autonomous. So it's not like I show up and then a machine takes over my truck. Nope. Okay. Nope. Um, they have. It, so it's been identified as um, a Fortune 100 company with 1.7 million square foot distribution center in Texas with 750 trailer staging bays. 
And that's all the identification they give. They don't give the name of the company or anything. Nope. Just its financial standings and the size of the distribution center. Yep. They don't go into any more detail on even where it's at in Texas. We just know nope. it's in Texas. Well, and I will say, judging – this is the article you sent us, right? It is. The picture has uh, – there's a logo on a trailer, and it's blurred out. It is. Yeah. Uh, there's actually uh, – on on the CDL Life article that I read, um, there was a video – Showing the trucks doing their work out there, and it everything was blurred, so you couldn't tell. But I was pretty amazed, though, that it's uh, fully autonomous. Uh, watching those trucks, they had three of them at one point kind of converging on a similar space, and um, they all took turns, and it's like, wow. Yeah, AI is pretty smart. The video is pretty cool. You can actually see um, there, there's, there's four different windows in the video. In the main vi window, you can see the three different yard dogs that are working. In the bottom, it's the driver's perspective from each of those three yard dogs. So you can see what they're seeing as you're watching. It, it's pretty cool. I mean, there's no drivers, but you can see from behind the steering wheel what these trucks are doing. For new listeners, cool. what's a yard dog? A yard dog is one of those little tiny trucks you see in a big distribution center um, that people are driving to move trailers between um, parking spots and doors. Right. Sometimes they're called spotters. I think that's the official name for them is the driver is called a spotter. Yeah. Uh, and they're driving these little single cab, uh, one person cab trucks. Um, and they're usually not even getting out of them to hook up trailers. They're climbing through a back door, um, hooking up an airline. The fifth wheel raises and lowers hydraulically so they can, they don't have to raise up the landing gear. They back into it. It hooks up on the fifth wheel they use the fifth wheel to raise the truck. They put top out, attach an airline, and they go put it either on back on the dock or back in the parking spot. And the airline is just to um, release the trailer release brakes. Release trailer brakes. Yeah. Yeah. Those are also the things um, you see the two by four hanging from chains in front of it have a magnet problem yes, on the bottom. Yes, lot, yeah. So they're trying yep. to clean up the parking lot from yep. sharp yep. stuff yep. Yeah. while they're working. About damaging tires, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but fully, full, fully aut autonomous, moving around. Sev well, they have center seven hundred and fifty bays. I would assume that they have maybe more trailers than that at any given time. Is it since it is fully autonomous? Oh yeah, they will definitely have more than seven hundred and fifty oh, trailers. Sure. But it, since it's fully autonomous, are humans allowed to drive in the in the property? It, we don't know. They the article say. gives okay. very little information. Yep. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool because I actually zoomed in to watch how they were attaching the glad hands. Yeah. And it appears the trailers are modified. So you still have, you can still see the glad hands there, but there's an arm that comes out from the back of the yard dog that connects underneath the glad hands. Hmm. So maybe there's a, some sort of bypass or something. So you're not, it's not connecting a glad hand and twisting it to lock it into place. It just plugs in, it looks like, to, to insert that airline. But it, the article didn't give a whole lot more information. The video only shows those three yard dogs. There are no humans in that video at all. Interesting. Yeah. Two things. Did you explain what a glad hand is? A glad hand is what you use to attach an airline uh, between a tractor and a trailer. So the trailers don't have their own air supply. Uh, they're using air from the compressor on the tra on the tractor to fill the, the air tanks in the trailer, and that's what the trailer uses for its braking system. Yeah. So the glad hands, you have two of them. Uh, one's your primary and one's your emergency braking that connect. They're, they're the, the hoses that run between a tractor and a trailer. Um, there's three of them, actually. There's two air lines and one electrical line that plug in uh, for lighting um, on the trailer. Um, the yard dogs don't need the electrical line. They just, they just need the one air line to release the brakes in the trailer. So, okay. and, and to release the brakes, so on um, trailer brakes, they have to have, I don't know how many pounds it is, 20, 40 pounds, something like that, of pressure uh, because uh, the way those drum brakes works is a uh, with no pressure, they the springs actually push out and 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 cause the brake yeah. to be fully engaged. So you need a little air pressure to push them back in. That releases the brakes, and then when you get more air pressure, it pushes them right back out. Um, so that like when you actually go to hit your brake pedal, it actually pushes them back out. But you have to have a little air in there in that system to keep them unattached. That way, if they're driving down the interstate and something happens, their brakes, uh, their brake line gets loose or something, the default is it clamps down on the brakes. That way, 
it, 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 and it's not, it's strong enough to hold it from a dead stop, but if you're rolling down the road and that happens, you'll just feel a tug. It won't, like, lock the wheels up, and then I'll let the driver know, hey, I need to move over and figure out what's going on um, if something were to happen. But it's, um, but again, for, and, 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 and should a trailer come completely detached, which you think would never happen, but look online. There's plenty of evidence of it. It locks the brakes up. That way the, the trailer kind of comes to a stop, and it doesn't, like, fly into another oncoming traffic or right. something like that. Wow. But um, So you do have to have a little bit of air going to the um, the trailer to release that. And the article, th- does it mention what the brand of it the trucks It mentions the, trucks the are? company name. Does that mention the brand of the trucks? Was it the, the company that is um, set this up and is running that time is testing is IC, ISEE. Uh, they're the ones that have installed or deployed the fleet of driverless trucks. But yeah. that we don't know what brand. It, it, they're a pretty generic brand of yard dog, it looks like. Yeah. They all look so so similar. They though. do. Yeah, so they're just so what they're doing is they're buying, if I'm not mistaken, they're buying a yard dog from someone. That's what it looks like. And then yeah. they're modifying it. Yeah. Yeah. Because it still has a steering wheel Melissa and all the other t- stuff. Told so. that earlier, and she was like, why do they have a steering wheel if it's no people? Yeah. And I said they're probably just buying off the shelf yard dogs. Right. And installing their electronics yeah. into it. It's not Tesla where they're ground up. Right, ground up. Yeah. So this way, I mean, they, they they've got this is pretty much a proof of concept. So I'd imagine if they do roll out larger scale, ultimately, you're right. Why do you need a cab? Yeah. You know, you don't need even a cab. I think Volvo put out a prototype of a, a, a autonomous vehicle. I think it was Volvo. And it was basically a, a... A box? Basically. It was like a car almost with the fifth wheel on it. Yeah. It didn't have the high cab. It was just dialed down low. Right. And hooked up. So, I mean, that that, that was a prototype. I think if, if again, this, this goes beyond proof of concept, it gets bigger... And it becomes more cost effective to build a yard dog that doesn't have a cab and a steering wheel from the ground up. I think that might we might see that happen eventually. Well, I know in aviation, like if you buy, um, or if you have a, a a small plane or something like that, they almost look like you ever seen the like a lawnmower, like a, a autonomous lawnmower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they don't have the handles for your for you to push or anything. Right. It's just the deck. It's they like actually, a, it's like a Roomba. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So they have those to tug airplanes out of hangars and to move them. Where you want, where you need to, because you can't drive an airplane out of a hangar. You have to actually pull it out. Um, and the way most people do it is they hook a little arm up to it. You just literally pull it out. Um, but they have these little like, they kind of look like those little Roomba or a, like a big Roomba, and they just drag it out. And you have one guy with a remote control or even their iPhone just telling it where to go, and it does it. Wow. I assume the eighteen wheeler will eventually, if not the eighteen wheeler, I'm sorry, the Yard dog right. would look like that at some point. Sure. And, um, you know, I've had a lot of people over the years ask about autonomous trucking and where's it going and everything. And, I, and I've told them, like, autonomous, long-range autonomous trucking has a long way to go. We're decades away from that. But anything that can be done within a geofence, which is a GPS-driven uh, area that is stationary or, or, or the, the the electronics have complete control over or anything that is dedicated route of like I got to get this 53 foot of beer from Budweiser plant to Budweiser dis- distribution center and right back and there's no variables that's the places that'll be affected first right and what do you see you see Pepsi Coca-Cola Budweiser right Investing in autonomous trucking because they know that is where it'll be the easiest thing to program. Wow. The easiest thing to do. Yeah. A yard dog? What a great idea. And, and one reason, too, to go, go, kind of go back to Eric's question, one reason you use a yard dog in a distribution center situation is for our tractor trailer friends who are doing a lot of drop and hook. Yes. Where you're pulling a trailer into a facility, you're not waiting to get unloaded, you're dropping that loaded trailer possibly picking up another loaded trailer and taking it off the facility. And then the, the yard dogs or the spotter's job is to stage a, a loaded trailer into a door to have it unloaded by the crew inside and then pull it out and bring another one in or bring an empty trailer into a door, have it loaded uh, and taken away so or, or even parked until another tractor comes in to take it away. So the, the, the yard dog's job is to get those trailers staged and ready for either 
unloading or for for um, leaving the yard. Absolutely. I have a, oh, go ahead. I have a question for Jerry coming from an IT perspective. He's like, really? So I, um, Vince and I were discussing the material beforehand. Um, my question is, what happens if there's a solar flare or a power outage or an AT&T glitch or any of those other things? How does that affect AI and maybe uh, specifically maybe in this instance with the yard dogs? W would you know that answer by any chance? Because I would assume it's all computer electronic-y. I wouldn't know specifics, but I would think that something like that would probably be like like you said, geofence, GPS onboard type of thing, you're not really getting a signal from an outside source like a satellite or something like that. It's going to be mapped out. It knows where to go. Each individual vehicle probably has, uh, it's just like the uh, vehicles out in Arizona, the taxi cabs. They've been running for years. Yeah. What, what are they called? Um, I know you're talking about, I can't think of the name of it. You know, they've been running for years picking up passengers with nobody in them. You know, they've got radar, they've got LIDAR, they've got all of that on board, so it can detect other objects and vehicles, and it knows where everybody is. So I would think it would be localized on that particular vehicle and not have to worry about satellites or connections going out or anything well, like that. Well, and the beauty of a yard, too, is you could do it all over Wi-Fi. You don't have to do it over satellite But or what if, like, phone. all that crashes? What What's good? I guess maybe my question, let me rephrase it. What prevents from one of these from running? Like, what are your obstacles, maybe? I would assume, I mean, like, anything okay. anything that has to do with safety, regardless, if it's an airplane, a train, a truck, an autonomous, whatever, I would assume there's fell safes, redundancy. Oh, yeah. If this thing doesn't get a signal from the mothership, so to speak. Right. From the office. At a bare minimum, I think it's going to shut down. If it's smart enough, it may complete its task. Right. And then shut down. Yeah. yeah. If it's really smart, it may finish its task, go do its next three tasks, and then shut down. Um, but at the end of the day, I think at, there has got to be some redundancy built in that says you've if power fell, solar fair, whatever happens, if you lose communication, sure, yeah, this is what you do. And then my other question is, are these still where you can flip a switch and be driven manually in case there is long-term technical issue? Or is an investor out all this money on an autonomous vehicle and you now have to go buy old-school trucks to it, come in? I think like, it, does it go both ways? I think this is being done by a, uh OEM who's trying to prove their technology, like Vince said. Yeah. So these trucks may have been modified in such a way that you can't drive them manually, mm. um, but maybe not. Um, yeah. I would kind of think, too, if you had something catastrophic like that happen, it's not going to last forever. We're going to be back up and running. Yeah. You're, you're going to. Sure. Well, you know, that's. So you're going to have that fail safe. It's going to park. It's going to do whatever it's going to yeah. do. Right. And then. Well, that's kind of why I was thinking it may know to do its next three tasks, knowing that. In the next 25 minutes, it takes me to do those next three tasks. The server may come back up, sure. and I may regain comp uh, competition, communication, right. and be fine to go again. Yeah, I get like, what you're saying. I think back to when I ran sound, and, and I was right when I quit doing sound, digital boards were really becoming a thing. So before that, it was all analog. So it literally, like, went through a bank of a, an electrical, like a microphone signal, went through a bank of electronic resistors and capacitors and all that stuff on a circuit board. And with current and voltage behind it, and as and everything we modified was a resistor modifying whatever, right? Like everything was very analog, and then it went out analog, and then it uh, went to a, a an amplifier, which made a speaker signal, which made the speakers run, right? Analog, and then when I got into that, the only way that fails is if you lose electricity. Outside of that, it runs great. Then we went to digital soundboards, which means it came in analog, and then a converter made it a digital signal, ones and zeros, and then it ran through a computer, and the computer told it what to manipulate. But even then, the redundancy was, if we lose all the computer technology and processing, the signal will continue as is, and we'll only be able to manipulate how loud or how soft it gets, 
but we can't be able to won't be able to control anything else. But at least we have redundancy so that if it does crap out, we can still keep the show going. We just maybe lose some effects or ability to do some cool stuff. But we can ah. still keep the show going. And I would assume these vehicles have the same fail safe. Sure. If at some point we lose like there's enough uh minimum whatever right. that they can keep doing that on the truck and if there's not right. then they just literally stop in place. Hmm. Um not a great deal for autonomous trucking. You can't have an eighteen wheeler just I lost signal and stop right. on the interstate. But in a yard situation you sure, could. Sure. So I thought it was a really cool article. I agree. I want to watch know? the video. I can't watch see that once this is done recording, but yeah. yeah. I was gonna say like you're talking about redundancy, if the signal does go out, as long as it's got enough internal instruction to go put myself in a safe place and then wait till everything shoots back up. Everything in programming, everything in electronics, you know, they call them if then conditions, logic. You literally have 15, 20 if then this, if yeah. then this, if then this. Like a punch list. Yeah. Yeah. So. Ah. Cuz it's not it's not really I mean like I guess AI is teetering on that but it's not really intelligence. It's just enough we have enough if thens that we've encompassed enough stuff that it can figure itself out, right? Yep. Like it's not literally your brain which is your brain's not running a series of if thens, it's actually thinking, critical thinking. Um but the computer you can't obviously do that, right? Like computer's not going to learn Sure, but um, as in, and I'm sure the more it experiences, the more it can then add more if thens, right? Yes, machine learning. Yeah. yeah, Apple's been doing that for a long time. I mean, yeah, I mean, think about how think about how bad Siri was when it first came out. It's still, <laughs> I have to admit, <laughs> Siri is still bad. <laughs> as she lights up sitting next to you, <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> She's like recording and sending to your mom. What? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's I, I, that's. On Apple's defense, though, that is because it's uh, so locked down. They're just privacy and everything is so locked down yeah. that she doesn't. She's not as smart as the other guys. I know Don complains about her constantly, but it's because Google and Alexa and all those. And I'm sorry if I'm setting your devices off out there. Um, yeah, they all are wide open and yeah. no privacy or anything else. So you don't have to say hey and then Alexa. Nope. I gave my our, our TV key goes word. off constantly because it's got hey. a built in. It drives me crazy. <laughs> do you ever ask Siri to tell you jokes? Yes. Sometimes I'll do that. I'll just be driving, and oh. I'm like, I need a good joke. We've 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 dragged on now uh, quite a while. <laughs> it's been a really good episode. It's really been a good therapy. It's been a good ch- chance talking with y'all. I, I don't know how it's going to come out in the edited version. I'm trusting Jerry to uh, make it great, but uh, it's been it's been a crazy couple weeks. We've been out of town. Y'all been out of town. It's just been insane. I'm glad to uh, get a chance to hang out with y'all. Y'all dinner was wonderful this morning. Thank you, Eric. This afternoon. By the way, uh, uh, Eric, amazing uh, uh, dinner. It was really, it really was. tasty. It, it was, was. It was very, very good. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for doing that. Yes. Um, yes. I enjoy it. One thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, so one thing we're doing behind the scenes is we're actually trying to. Um, Every Outer Belt episode, uh, we, we film these at night, so we're going to um, have a dinner beforehand. We haven't done that. We've done it once or twice last season, but now we're going to try and make it a regular thing. Just a chance for us to get around the table, have a meal, kind of talk a little bit about the notes of what we're going to talk about in the show, and then go down here and actually film it. So um, does that sound good to you? Are you agreeable to uh, coming and hanging out and, and eating with us? And it'll be something we cook from home most nights. I, maybe occasionally we'll do some fried chicken or something, but... Um, home cooked meal, little dialogue, little hanging out, and then we'll come down here and, and hash things out on the actual show. But um, sounds good. Yep, yeah, uh, and we'll do a better job of preparing uh, time wise of when <laughs> when to start <laughs> cooking. Uh, it's it's a late it, for y'all today. It's it's late. It's late for all of us. Uh, because of uh, just anyways. Doesn't matter. Tornado so, warnings. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, solar flares, something. Right. Things coming up. We have the Manure Truck Show coming up March 21st to 23rd. 21st to 23rd. Um, if you've never gone before and you're in Louisville or the surrounding areas, go. It's a great show. It's yeah. it's massive. Bring some cash. Buy some chrome for your truck. Buy a, uh electric heater because they had that last year. I don't yeah. know why. Um, I like <laughs> the just, true. They had a coffee booth that I liked. 
Did they? They did. Oh, no. They had a five-hour energy booth that I really? adored. Do you remember the coffee booth? They were out coffee of uh, Chicago or something. Yeah. Was it free coffee or no? It was. And cute little... They were making Americanos and espressos. Did you see this? Yeah. It was like right on the other side of the Panther booth. I or I was living it up there. Well, in the clearly, booth. we need to communicate <laughs> yeah, better. Right. I mean, right. geez. Anyway, Jerry yes. was walking around taking video a lot of the time. I remember that. I yeah. thought it was odd that there was a coffee booth, but I think somehow they were tied in with the Chrome shop next door. So I, I don't see that. know. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of people like, here's your co- have a cup of coffee and talk with us about what yeah. we can do for you or whatever. Maybe. It's a really cool show. You're going to see a lot of OEMs. You're going to see a lot of carriers. Panther Premium Logistics will be there. They're going to be in the Arc Best booth with uh, ABF Freight and Arc Best. Um, and FedEx usually makes an appearance. Yeah. I, I haven't seen an announcement yet, but they usually make an appearance there. It's... Um, we're going to be hanging out there. We're not going to be in a booth like we were last year. Um, just the way schedules work out, we weren't able to put it together. But we are going to be walking around. So if you see one of us in the show, come tap on our shoulders and say hi. We'd love to talk with you, see you for a few minutes. Um, come out and wish me a happy birthday because it's three days prior to my birthday. You don't have to. But Woo-hoo. if you want, uh, yeah. No, it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, we'll be walking around filming uh, the trucks and whatever else you see. But the OEMs are there. So, like, your big truck manufacturers Those are there. Cool. The the sleeper companies are there. Air Eyes usually has usually has a pretty cool cool booth. You'll see. Uh, they have the my favorites, the working trucks show, antique working antique trucks or something like that. So it's the it's like 1962 Marmons working. Yes. Like the company hadn't been in business in 40 years. Right. But you still see a dump truck or an, or a tractor trailer. That's the guy still driving it. Yep. And it's like, it's so cool to see these old cab overs, tons of cab tons overs. Of cab tons, overs. Ton, like, it's really cool to see a piece of American life that's not just a, a trailer queen. And they have those too, and those are cool. Oh, sure. But this this truck actually still runs. It still yeah. serves its purpose 30, 40, 50, 60 years after it's I like built. like the tricked out ones. Oh, the tricked out ones. Oh my gosh. You remember that one the last lowered. year that had the, um, it was like the, the cyborg, not cyborg. Um, it was like a Mad Max look. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, that was so it cool. It was like all cut out or something. Yeah. yeah. I, Chopped I down. A, yeah. I took a lot of photos. That, of that was a cool one. It was. It was really cool. And 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 it may be back. It may be a different one this time. Um, but it, it's a great time to come out. Look, they have free giveaways. Get a yardstick. Get some candy. Get get all the free giveaways they give away. It, it's a lot of fun. They have a uh, open uh, uh not an open bar a uh, cash bar anyway so uh, but it's it's a lot of fun they have a concert uh they have a concert a truck pool truck maybe? pool or monster yeah. truck or something yeah, yeah it's something like something that, like that. Yeah. tractor pull tractor pull i think yeah uh but it, it's it's a really cool show it's a great time louisville's a fun city uh if you have a tractor trailer or or, tr- or commercial truck they have parking but it's moved this year check out their website tr- uh, truckshow.com truckingshow.com just Google Maps. Just Google Maps. Mid America Truck Show. The link will be in the description. Yes. <laughs> uh, it, 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 they they did move the truck parking this year, and I apologize. I forgot where it was, but it's a uh, they do free parking at the uh, on the website where it says uh, they do have paid for parking at the actual expo center. Um, but if you're going to be there for a couple of days, get the free parking. They usually have shuttle buses that bring you back and forth for free. It makes it really really really, really simple. Um and uh, you just meet up with a bunch of truckers and and have a great time. It it again the, the show is huge. You'll see all kinds of cool stuff. You'll get inspired. You'll have ideas. If you're not in trucking and you're like, let me go see what this is about. It's another great way to like get uh introduced to the world of trucking. They have breakout sessions as well that you can go to and see uh, and listen to industry experts talk and stuff. It, it's it's a really good thing. Go out and see it. We'll be there Thursday Friday. I don't think we're making Saturday, but we're going to be there for Thursday and Friday. Um, but it's going to be uh, – we'll make a recap video. You'll see that in a, a few weeks. But, um, yeah, we look forward to seeing you for there. If not, check out that recap video in a few weeks. And uh, outside of that, still don't have any words from Expedite Expo yet. Uh, not sure what's going on there. We will look forward to seeing you next week. Hit that like button. Hit that share button. Share it with a friend. You never know who would like to hear us ramble as they're going down the road or just – getting into trucking or wanting to know what we talk about on a daily basis or weekly basis, uh, hit that thumbs up button and uh, hit the subscribe button. It's free. It doesn't cost you a thing, but it helps us out with the YouTube algorithm. We'd really, really appreciate it.
Absolutely. And if you're listening to us on a podcast or if you're watching us on YouTube and you're like, this is something I'd like to listen to so I don't have to watch it while I'm driving down the road, you can find us on all your uh, podcast platforms, no matter what you have. We're on all of them under the Outer Belt. And uh, we actually just hit over 500 downloads. On, 500 downloads on Apple Podcasts. Sweet. That's awesome. Thank you all so much for that. We really appreciate it. We, nice. uh, if you have any ideas yeah, uh, that you want to suggestions topics. that you topics that you want us to talk about, send it to us at the Outer Belt Pod at what? The Outer Belt Podcast at gmail dot com. Thank you. It, uh, you'll also find the link under below uh, to that as well. But um, we would love to uh, hear your feedback, your suggestions. We got a couple that we're working on right now. That are uh, y'all gave us some good topics that takes takes a little bit of research that we're working on, um, but we'd love some more. And it can be for any of us. It just doesn't have to be a generic topic. You can say like, I want Melissa specifically to talk about fill in the blank. I want <laughs> Eric specifically to talk about fill in the blank. We would love to uh, get those requests and 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 see. We we appreciate all the interaction with y'all. I guess in the meantime, make good decisions and drive safe. Don't leave money on the table and keep those wheels a turning. Bye. Good night. <laughs>